Go with me to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest. How many of you would like to enter into rest in the area of your finances? Come on, somebody. Enter into rest in the area of your finances. Hallelujah. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to come short of it. So what kind of fear is this? Well, this is the fear of God. This is having a fear of God so that we can enter into the rest. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So when you hear the word, you got to mix faith with it. It's like, you know, you're baking a cake, right? You got to mix all the right ingredients together. And again, it comes down to the same thing. Just because you got a word from a prophet or from a minister doesn't mean it's going to come to pass. You got to mix faith with it. I'll never forget, I was in a meeting. There was another African prophet. And he called out this lady and said, the Lord said, you know, he's going to give you a house. He's going to bless you with a house. And the lady stood there and just kind of stared at him with unbelief. Like she didn't receive the word. She just stood there and just kind of stared at him. And then, and then there was another guy several rows behind. He jumped up. Now, he was a pastor, a young pastor. He jumped up and said, I'll take that word. And he ran up and the prophet said, because you, have, you did not believe the word of the Lord, it shall not come to pass for you. But because, and you grabbed it. God's going to bless you with a house. And somebody ran up and gave him a check for $10,000, said, here's your down payment. So just because you got a word doesn't mean it's going to come to pass. Now, of course, you know, and, and a lot of people are looking for a word when they have the word. You know, and if listen, if you're not doing the word, what good is a word, right? So you got to be a, you got to be doers of the word, not hearers only. So when you hear the word, you got to mix faith with it. That means that's my word. I take that word. It's for me, and I'm gonna believe it, and I'm gonna obey it. I'm gonna step out in faith, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to do because every word of God comes conditionally. There are always conditions attached to when God speaks, and the same way. You know, we come here, we have opportunity to give as we bring our tithes and offerings or any other time that you have an opportunity to give. Amen. You can see we're a given church. I mean, people just, you know, spontaneous offerings happen. Money, showers of blessing, money get thrown on people here, things like that. And, and somebody says, well, well why are they gonna, when are they going to throw money on me? <laughs> Maybe if you, you should start throwing some money on other people and then you'll have money thrown on you at some point. Because it, it's like a test when somebody's getting money showered on them, you just run up and, and, and throw money on them. But you got to mix faith. And so when we have an opportunity to give, a lot of times people come and they sit there with an attitude and I don't know what, you know, it could be a number of different reasons and, and whatever might have happened and they just think to themselves, you know, well, they just want my money. We don't want your money. We don't want your money. Amen. And, and, and there's such an attack. Now you got entire groups of people. There's a documentary coming out now. I saw it on, um, on social media. And they're just attacking, attacking the church, attacking the church for receiving offerings. Like, how do you think we're supposed to function? You pay your taxes. You, why don't you go and, 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 and you know, storm the gates in, in D.C. and whatever. You have no issue paying taxes because you know they're going to come after you. We, nobody comes after you in the church, but then they have a problem giving. But how do you think the kingdom of God is supposed to operate? You know, how do you think it's supposed to function? We, as God's people, we have to do our part in mixing faith when we give. And when we have an opportunity to sow seed, we always mix faith with it. That means we sow the seed in faith, believing God for the miracle, breakthrough, the harvest, the increase as God's word promises, all of these things. So in order for you to tap into the promise of God, you're going to have to mix faith with the word of God. And that means every promise is conditional. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember this. 
He who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. So there's sowing comes before reaping. Everybody wants to reap, but they haven't sown. So you got to, sowing comes before reaping. And you got to mix faith with it. And look at verse 3 says, for we who have believed do enter that rest. You can actually enter into rest in the area of your finances. You don't have to live in worry. You don't have to live in anxiety, worrying about how you're going to take, pay your bills. Uh, that's the least that God's going to do for you. Paying your bills is the least you should even be worried about. What you will eat, what you will put on, what you will drink. Jesus says, don't even worry about these things because that is the least. And if that's all you focus on, then he says, you of little faith. So God wants you to have big faith. What does that mean? He wants you to believe God for big things because he's got something big for you to do. He's got something big for you. Hallelujah. He's got something that he's going to use you to do supernaturally and... Uh, so your personal provision is the least you should worry about. God's gonna, not going to only meet your needs. He's going to use you to meet the needs of others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God's going to raise you up. Hallelujah. There are people here that are going to go shake nations. Hallelujah. And you can't go shake a nation with 10 bucks. You know that. There are people here who are going to launch kingdom businesses and, and, and put millions into the kingdom. Hallelujah. And God's going to give you the power to create wealth. God's going to anoint you. Hallelujah. He's going to anoint you. He's going to bless the work of your hands, not the seat of your pants. A lot of people just sitting around waiting on God, but God's waiting on you. You got to mix faith with what I'm telling you right now. You got to say, that's my word right now. I'm the one who's going to build that kingdom business. I'm the one who's going to go shake a nation. I'm the one. I'm the one. That word is for me. I'm going to take... I'm going to get a hold of God's word for me, and I'm going to march on. I'm going to rise up. I'm the one who's going to the next level. Praise God. For they who believe do enter that rest. Hallelujah. So you can enter into rest. Rest assured. Your provision is the least. Because he will give you an abundance for every good work. Hallelujah. Amen. Then it says, there are people who don't believe. They shall not enter my rest. So you can be restless or restful. How do you go from being restless to restful? Faith. Faith. Believe God's word. Call those things which be not as though they were. Believe it. Speak it. Take a hold of God's word. And look, it says... Since, verse 6, since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and to those whom it was preached did not enter because of disobedience. So when God speaks to you, you got to obey. you got to obey. The Lord told them, pack your bags, go to Florida, you're going to meet a pastor. Well, you know what that means for a traveling minister? You cancel your calendar for a week, and then you go. Now you're out of pocket. And you're thinking, now we're spending all this money. Little didn't you know, you're going to meet the pastor. You're going to be lying on the stage and you're going to get showered with money. Just obey. Just obey. And what you need to understand, and that was something I had to learn as a young minister, that God's covenant is with me. And I struggled with that in the beginning. Like, I mean, you know. I thought that I have to be preaching all the time for the, the offerings to come in. And it was like the offerings were my source of income. And, and the Lord said, oh, you're relying on your offerings. How was that offering last week? Well, Lord, it seemed like I went to that place and I paid to go preach. Then when I realized it doesn't matter, it's not, I'm not dependent on an offering. 
I'm not depending on an offering. I'm not depending on people, whether they will obey or not, because God will speak to people. And I can tell you right now, there was a time, there was a multi, multi-millionaire. He came to visit me in Istanbul, Turkey, and he said, I'm going to get behind your ministry. I'm going to do this much every month. And then he made this promise. We shook hands. I, told, I called my wife. I said, praise the Lord. I did not see one dime from that guy. And later he sends me a picture how he bought a second Ferrari. That's the only time I ever heard from him. I, I just bought my second Ferrari. I said, really, I'm still believing God to get a building in Istanbul. I think that second Ferrari would have paid for my building. But he was more interested in, in second Ferrari than helping me get the building. And he promised he would, but he didn't do anything. And then in 2007, he was a builder, building huge, he lost everything. He lost everything and had to sell the Ferraris to put food on the table. That's what happens when you don't obey God. And I realized, and, and I was heartbroken. It was hard for me. And I looked back on it and I said, thank God that guy never sent me a dime. Thank God, because I would have become dependent on him. Amen. He's, he wasn't going to be my sugar daddy. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not dependent on him. My blessing comes from obeying God. There's a lot of people out there looking for their sugar daddy. Somebody to bankroll them. You got, listen, you don't have a sugar daddy. You got Abba daddy. You got Abba daddy. You got Abba daddy. He's your heavenly father. Jesus said, your father in heaven knows, knows you have need of these things. Worry not. Seek you first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added on to you. All means all. Hallelujah. And years later, I was able to look, at back, look back at that situation and say, thank God. Thank God he never sent me a dime. Because it would have hindered my faith. It would have hindered my faith. And then there was that one time I, I shared the story recently about how the Lord spoke to me to give three months of the income of the ministry back in 2000. I'm trying to remember. It must, must have been 2002 or three. Yeah, three. And then I was in Finland with Dr. Rodney. He was doing the fire conference, Finland ablaze. And, and so I'm sitting in the service and he's talking about how he's got this crusade he's about to do in Africa. It's going to cost $150,000. He's believing God for, you know, whatever, 150,000 souls and all that. And the Lord speaks to me. He says, I want you to pay a tithe of it. A tithe of it would have been $15,000, and it would have been three months of the income of our ministry. And we were going through the, one of the toughest economic downturns in our nation. Our money was so devalued that $15,000 US dollars was $9 billion in our currency. We had so many zeros on our money, people would be confused. Like, we had a, our lowest paper money was 1 million lira, and you could buy maybe a, a, a pack of gum with it. Okay? And then our largest denomination was 100 million. And there were so many mil zeros, people would get confused. It was easy to scam the tourists. I didn't scam them, of course, but the, you know, taxi drivers and people would just scam the tourists because they can't count the zeros. Nine billion, the Lord says, give nine. And that was three months of the income of our ministry. And then, I mean, I believe God for I had $500 in my pocket in the, in the ministry's account at the time. And I saw that. And I pledged that the rest, and I had three months. I pledged in the next three months, I'm going to be able to do it. And we did it. And yet, the ministry was still sustained for those three months, over and above. But after that, all heaven broke loose. I mean, like, we literally, you ready for this? We literally saw a 25-fold increase in many of our areas. Paid cash for vans, put five people on staff. When I was like on half a salary, half salary. Paid $100,000 of 
cash for television equipment, went on television, started going to the nations, doing my own conferences and revivals, all kinds of th things, just paying for them, taking care of them. It just exploded. But, and then right in the middle of the explosion, there was this Turkish pastor whom I took to Tampa with me. I said, you coming with me? He was, you know, he kind of grew up around the Baptist and he got baptized in the Holy Ghost and he was kind of trying to find his way. And, and I said, I said, you're going to come with me. And I paid for his ticket. I put him up in a hotel. I fed him for the whole week. I took him to the conference with me. And I said, I want you to press in, get a hold of the anointing. But the whole week, he went around looking to see who his sugar daddy. I warned him. He's good. He just went around looking for his sugar daddy. I said, stop it right now. I brought you here to press in to get the fire of God in your life. And then he says to me, he goes, well, you know, your ministry is exploding. You know, I guess Pastor Ronnie must be bankrolling you. I said, actually, the opposite. I saw three months of the income of the ministry, and that's where the explosion came. I support him in the mission field. We saw out of Istanbul into missions when you can't even pay your rent. Then I said, I'll pay your rent for one year, but I want you to press in. He never got it. He never got it. To this day, still struggles. And I'll try to help people. You see, I'll try to help people because they're always looking for their sugar daddy. Somebody to bankroll them, you know. But you got to take the word of God for yourself and obey the word and, and be a giver and believe God for big things. Be a sower. God gives seed to the sower and bread for eating. And then multiplies their seed sown and increases the fruits of righteousness. And that's exactly what happened with me. I believe God for the seed that I didn't even have. And the Lord provided it. And for the next three years, from 2003 all the way to 2000, end of 2006 and 7 even, I mean, everything just changed. Everything just shifted. Started, I had the call to go to, desire to go to the nations. I couldn't even take a salary from our church in Istanbul because the economy was so bad. I, I think probably 60% of the people in our church were unemployed at the time. 27 banks had folded and went under. It was total disaster. We woke up one night and our, our money devalued by thousand fold. Amen. So you would say in the midst of that, it would be impossible. Somebody said, well, what did you do? I opted out. <laughs> because we're not under mammon's economy. We're under the economy of the kingdom of God. We're under the economy of the kingdom of God, not mammon's economy. So let the, let the world have its economic crisis. And actually, when there is times of shaking, these are the best times for God's people. It's in times of shaking that wealth transfer happens. And that's actually a lot of the shaking is actually by design. The whole bankers, banking system behind it, it's not random. All this stuff is by design. Okay? All the inflation, devaluation, it's all by design. It's all by design by the wicked people, that, the money changers that run the system. They do it to dispossess people of their wealth. And so when they shake things up, just realize there's going to be wealth transfer. You are going to be positioned to become a part of supernatural wealth transfer that's going to come into the hands of the righteous because my Bible tells me, come on somebody, that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. So you got to believe God. You got to, you got to enter into rest. And I had to learn that. When you're in the middle of that situation, that storm, Every day the devil is saying, you're not going to make it. Your church is not going to make it. Your ministry is not going to make it. Look at it. Everything, everything's over. Look at this. Everything's over. Look, the, look, the whole street where your church is cleared out, everyone ban went bankrupt. Look, 60% of your church is unemployed. What are you going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start Kingdom Business Fellowship, and I'm going to take all those unemployed people. I'm going to teach them how to start businesses, how to believe God to create wealth. And many of those people that were unemployed, some of these guys were literally working in sweatshops. Wow. Sweatshops for $2 a day. Wow. Then they started their own companies. One guy, I believe, has 17 people working for him right now. He has an international cargo business. He's an African guy from Nigeria, and now he's doing business in many African countries right out of Istanbul, Turkey.
So you can go work from go from working at a sweatshop for two dollars a day to having your own company where 17 people are working for you, and now you're doing business internationally. God is no respecter of persons. He's looking for that one that's going to grab a hold of the word of God. Say, it is for me. I'm going to do it. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to believe God. Somebody here is going to get a hold of this word and going to rise up. This is the poorest you will ever be from this day forward. It is only going up. You're going to the next level. You're going to the next level. Do not be moved by circumstances. We are not walking by sight. This is the year of separation for those who walk by sight and those who walk by vision. It's your time to rise. You've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. Hallelujah. I'm here to provoke your faith. I'm here to challenge your faith. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. You don't have to settle. You're not here just to exist and take up space. You're here to march on. You're here to occupy till he comes. You're here to prosper. You're here to do mighty things for the kingdom. You're here to do exploits for the kingdom of God. <laughs>